Well, it was the digital domino, domino effect around the world, felt around the world, a massive outage at Amazon's web services uh, that knocked out everything from Alexa to or airline check-ins. For hours Monday, much of the internet stumbled, showing just how dependent businesses and consumers are on a handful of cloud providers. Reports of online di service disruption surged across more than 70 countries, impacting gaming and streaming, banking and e-commerce pa platforms. Experts say the outage revealed how concentrated the web's backbone has become uh, with most major apps using Amazon's services. The core of the problem hit Amazon's Virginia data hub, a reminder that one glitch, all it takes is one glitch, and that can send shockwaves around the globe. Let's break this down a little bit and more of the what happened. Uh, Andrew Green is the assistant professor of information security and assurances at uh, Kennesaw State University. Welcome back to the show. Good morning, glad to be back. All right. Uh, from your perspective, what specifically failed inside of Amazon's system, and why can that one data region bring down so many other aspects of the internet? Right, so Amazon reported a failure of what we call the domain name system, or DNS. And that is akin to a phone book, for those of us of a certain age, where you look up somebody's name and you get a telephone number. In the computer world, there, there is, uh, there's the equivalent of that, where I look up a domain name like 11alive.com, and the DNS server returns back an IP address. In the computer world, it's no different. Systems talk to each other looking up domain names to get an IP address to the system that they need to talk with because IP addresses change on systems all the time. And so it's really inefficient to point systems to IP addresses to talk to. It's easier to say, find the system with this domain name so that they can talk to each other all the time and not worry about IP address changes. And so it highlights the fact that we, we rely on DNS without even relying about it. It really is the glue that holds the internet together. And what Amazon suffered yesterday was an internal failure of their own DNS servers. And so in effect, the services that they offer to run all of the public offerings that they sell to others that the businesses build on, build on to, to offer their services, they failed internally. And so their systems weren't able to talk internally so they weren't able to provide the public facing services that businesses build their service offerings on. And so it was a pyramid of cascading failure. It's the only way really to describe it. Yeah, Andrew, is, is there a, did we learn something from this? I, I mean, how, how complex this system is, you know, the infrastructure and, and would thing, will things change as a result? I don't know that we learned anything. I think that we had lessons reiterated. Uh, what we learned, uh, what was reiterated is that cloud when it works, it's great. But when it fails, as we saw yesterday, uh, it, creates, it creates problems, especially in this one particular region for Amazon. Uh, the failure occurred in the US East One region, mm -hmm. which also happens to be the one location where Amazon hosts a series of global services that no matter what region in the world you host your applications or services in, they may need to call back to this one particular region to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a failure in this region, it is especially critical because if I can't, for example, authenticate a user or make a particular call back to a specific database that is only offered in this one region by Amazon, then my organization is functionally unable to make those calls and therefore my applications are dead in the water or I can't authenticate. Yeah. And, th <clears throat> and that's what we saw yesterday. How quickly can experts tell whether or not this is a cyber attack or just a system failure? Is that an easy thing to see? It depends on the circumstances. Uh, I think Amazon was pretty certain early on based on the reporting that I saw that this was this was an internal error and not, not an attack from a threat actor group. Um, there's a running joke in our industry that it's always DNS because that's just how critical DNS is. You can make one mistake uh, in, in your DNS uh, server configuration or availability and create a cascading failure that can cause situations just like what we saw yesterday. Uh, and so it's not uncommon, uh, well, I say that with, with my fingers crossed and in air quotes, uh, for, for, for problems like this to be ultimately related to a DNS error or misconfiguration of some type. Uh, or, or if it's not that, it's an internal networking error of some type. 
Uh, and and uh, Amazon engineers, just like any other engineers, highly skilled, well-trained, well-educated, uh, and can typically figure out pretty quickly either A, this is something that we did internally, mm-hmm. or B, this isn't something we did internally, and then they need to dig a little deeper. All right. Assistant Professor Andrew Green, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for your insight. Appreciate it. Thank you.